We'll move on here to the start of the hearing. So there were essentially three sets of speeches. There was the pre-hearing set of speeches. Then there was the speeches during the lunch break. And then there were some speeches at the end of the day following the arguments. Um, So here is Julian's wife, Stella, greeting the crowd. Um, This was pretty emotional, Um, not because of what she said, but because of the time she took between saying it she was clearly affected by this and um this this is this is a little tough to watch honestly but uh i think we should so here is stella at the beginning of the day thank you everyone for coming here today for julian he'll be very moved to know that so many people showed up today whatever happens today and tomorrow and this week Please keep on showing up. Be there for Julian and for us and for you until Julian is free. Free Julian Assange. Thank you. Thank you. Um, We have two big days ahead. We don't know what what, what to expect. Um, But you're here because the world is watching. They have to know they can't get away with this. Julian needs his freedom, and we all need the truth. Thank you. I mean, that is just, it's just tough. It's just so gutting. It's just brutal, you know. And, you know, on top of the implications of this case for all of us is the just human story of this guy this husband this dad you know you're a mom misty i'm a i'm a dad um she's got the kids to take care of she said in a recent article they don't tell the kids about the extradition right just having to sort of protect your kids from the injustice of this and the tragedy of this and um having to show up there and keep your poise knowing the odds are stacked against you and that's probably an understatement unfortunately Um, And knowing you have to go in there and give it your best. I mean, the pressure on top of the emotional stakes is just brutal, just brutal. It's just it's just a horrible, sick, sadistic thing that our country and the UK are putting this family through, not to mention all the implications. Yeah, it's I mean, watching it play out and watching the way that this I mean, so much time and energy and resources and money has been spent trying to destroy one human being. Uh, And then this is the fallout from that, right? I mean, as one human being, he obviously has friends and family and children. And you know what I mean? Like he's got, uh, and so it's, and and then just watching the callousness um, and sadistic, it's sadistic what they are doing. It is murder in slow motion. And And a a byproduct of that is your family has to watch you be murdered in slow motion. Like that is, I can't imagine. Like I, I, I mean, obviously Stella always gets to me, the kids, all that stuff that always gets to me, but then also his father, like John Shipton, I look at John Shipton, who's been traveling the world for the last several years, having meetings and making movies and going, and he's just, I've met him. He's a very nice, very, like, he's very soft-spoken. If you have an event with John Shipton, have a good sound system. Yeah. <laughs> he's very soft-spoken. Julian's Whitten. very soft-spoken too. Yes. He's, very calm, John is very, very yes. Yeah. He, uh, John's got like this 
kind of whisper voice almost like he should read children's bedtime stories. He has right. like really just fantastic and soothing voice, but he's very quiet, very soft spoken and he's wicked, smart, and funny. And, uh, and then I just think about all of the things and the pressure for him trying to go around the globe, having meetings with world leaders and convincing them to not murder his son in slow motion. It's just devastating watching. And it's so um, unjust, like, I know that's very dumb. Like it sounds very idealistic and cliche, but it's just so unjust. Everything that's happened to him, the way that his human rights have been violated over and over and over again in broad daylight, everybody can see it happening and it's just happening. It's just so fucking bizarre to me, honestly. It's so fucking bizarre to me that anybody could look at this uh, and, uh, oh, the CIA uh, uh, co-opted a Spanish security firm and turned it into a spying operation, including spying on conversations that he had within his legal team th to plan his defense. Yeah, let's let that case continue. What the fuck? Like that alone should be enough. <laughs> That's so it. many things should be yeah. enough to have this thrown out. So many things under normal circumstances would be enough to have this tossed. He couldn't show up for the hearing today because he's no. in such horrible shape and such he's horrible still. health. That alone, like if you're being detained in a way that, you know, such that like you're you're not able to shake a cough that you got over Christmas because that's what she said. She said he's been sick since Christmas. What is it? He it's broke almost a March rib. already. He, he broke, broke a rib. rib. He has osteoporosis. Coughing, right. Yes. Like. This Coughing is the, you, so hard he broke a rib. Yes, That's in detention, under yes. the care of the states. Yes. He is in this shape. That alone Had should be Had a mini enough. stroke. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So if he's being, like, if he is being driven to that, to the point where he cannot show up and make his own case against extradition, how do you extradite him under that circumstance? Tell me another case where this wouldn't just be thrown out, where right? it wouldn't be said, what are you fucking crazy? Right. <laughs> yeah. It is insane to me. And I mean, just in mentioning the mini stroke, let me just paint that picture for anybody who's not familiar with how that played out. This was the, the, during the last round of hearings and he wasn't allowed to pro, uh, attend his own hearings in person. He had to do it via video link because, you know, that makes sense. The guy's fighting for a light, his life and you want him to show up via Skype. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's ridiculous. Um, but he wasn't allowed to attend in person. So he was in Belmarsh in a tiny room, uh, like doing the video link in. And everybody in the courtroom, all the journalists covering it were like, man, he looks like shit. Like, he looks bad. You want to know why? He was having a fucking mini stroke as he's sitting there. And do you want to know what they were discussing in the courtroom at that particular moment in time? The prosecution was calling him a malingerer, saying that he was faking his health conditions to uh, get out of accountability. As he's having a fucking mini stroke you can't write that shit you know what i mean like that's insane that that happened um and then they just you know uh, just put him back in prison uh it's just nuts all of these things keaton uh it is insane i mean i could ramble off a dozen examples of really egregious ways that his human rights have been violated over the past 13 14 years and it just it, it, no it seems like nobody's pay nobody cares it's all right it's fine it's just nuts the accumulation of it all it's astounding yeah, and it's it's really exposing. I mean, one of the things that we're going to show in some of the footage that we're going to play of Russ's uh, on Thursday, um, there was this one guy who said, you know, and I think Russ kind of egged him on with this. They went back and forth. Like, all these things they say would happen to people in, you know, totalitarian states, you know, Russia and China. This is what they do to dissidents, critics of the state. It's what's being done here? It's what's being done here in broad daylight. And yeah. um, the media doesn't care. No one really seems to care. Um, it's just amazing. Uh, really, really. And horrible. the people doing it are finger wagging yes. at Russia and China. Like, how dare you jail journal? Really? The rank hypocrisy and lack of self-awareness that somebody like Antony Blinken has getting on Twitter and tweeting about, uh, you know, some country jailing journalists as he is you know, part of the United States government that's responsible for the, uh, you know, the torture and persecution of a journalist. It's just all of it is so frustrating. Every World Press Freedom Day, you see a tweet from Kamala Harris and Hillary Clinton and all these people who are like, uh, press freedom is the foundation of democracy. Really? <laughs> it's, am I taking crazy pills? Like it's every time it never fails. Please clap. Please clap.